so uh, this next important parameter is what we called as the resource curse what exactly this is very interesting what exactly is the resource curse yeah you know when we are extracting these natural resources okay when we are extracting these natural resources what we are doing we are creating opportunity also for ourselves we are uh, creating opportunities in terms of employment in terms of better facilities but we are risking it with our health we are risking it for our sustainability okay and often it has been observed that the health is not affecting a what you call an individual when a natural resource is affected it affects a community pehle kehte the na gaon ka kuwa sook gaya to pura gaon hi shift ho jata tha ya talab sook gaya to pura talab hi shift ho jata tha uh if you uh, like our area is called as a dhola kuwa if you ever sit along with any senior citizen uh, delhiite or uh, a people uh, who were uh, from the city of delhi itself you will get to know the history of dhola kuwa or the chanakya puri the satya marg that we know what exactly was the history of satya marg how those villages were uh, how those villages were completely destroyed and shifted how those you know in the terms of development when we are talking about development we now find chanakya puri and the presidential palace all awesome and looking good but what happened to the real villages what did the british do they had those wells those kuwas the satya uh, this was a nyay gaon the nyay marg that we call today that was a nyay gaon almost like 100 years back that was the nyay gaon but the nyay gaon and the satya gaon were completely you know those wells were filled with mud by the british so that they need area they needed area to develop the city the villages were destroyed they were given uh, what we call the ashram today the ashram is uh, from those people who were shifted from this chanakya puri area they were given land over here in ashram so what this was the resource curse that on the one hand we were developing uh, what you call a city we were creating opportunities but on the other hand we were destroying the sustainability these uh, these villages were very close to the ridge these were part of ridge itself the ridge that we uh find around at the back of what you call the presidential palace or the gyara murti or in front of the taj uh, taj palace hotel yeah uh, if you find on the south campus these villages was part of that forest area but when we are talking about development this is what is called the resource curse okay these resource curse has generally been observed to bring negative health and you know the social outcome okay negative health in terms of like environment contamination the strain on local water these cities didn't have any you know these villages didn't have any uh, direct connection with any river but they were having those water bodies some water bodies they had and they had those wells also on which these villages were dependent so that when these wells were filled these villages were destroyed so to survive they had to move on so uh, water the sanitation resources the reduced health equality then there are you know with this development with this type of development there are uh, there is increased tra traffic in terms of modern terms there is increased uh, traffic then there are accidents and then injuries okay then we have various type of chronic diseases vector borne diseases you know these are part of you know these are part of living itself um, um, many of us are from like villages also and uh, we have seen hum log bolte hain are pehle yahan par bada acha gaon hota tha ab to sadak khinch gayi yahan par aur highway ban gaya yahan par fine highway is indeed the need of the heart but 
most important thing is we need trees also along those highways we need water bodies also along those highways so that the water level is not disturbed now how can we control this resource plus this is what is called as the health impact assessment you know health impact assessment you know it's a parameter that can control in which we consider the risk you know caused by these uh, growth uh, parameters and we promote the benefits of development you know it, it, we need uh, health impact assessment is that when we are developing a or when we are utilizing a natural resource we need to develop an alternate plan we need to have a alternate plan so that these things are not affected much you know these natural resources if we are utilizing or if we are destroying a forest cover if we need to develop it for purpose of crops or we need to develop it for uh, what you call a city or for a dwelling we need to have that development we need to have those uh, we need to develop those similar parameters at an alternate site also so that if a city develops if a city is utilizing vehicles if a city is causing a pollution we need a what you call a green sink which can absorb this pollution that is a very important parameters and sorry we are not at all paying attention not only in india in almost every country whether it is developed or whether it is developing this health impact assessment is given the least priority okay so we need to consider this uh, parameter also when we are developing a project now another thing that is the use of environment one was a human impact assessment the other is the use of environmental economic indicators okay what is the use of environment and uh, economic indicators uh, when we talk about the present scenario when we talk about the present economy we cannot sideline economic growth economic growth or the development of city is a very important parameter it has to be there you cannot remove the cars from your life anymore from diesel to petrol or to electric vehicle or some other resource maybe solar solar in the future but still you require it you cannot remove these okay you cannot remove this but the most important thing is when we are considering these factors when we are considering about economy we need to maintain our natural environment goals because it is affecting the health if you are developing those solar panels but you don't have a strategy to dispose of the these solar panels or recycle those solar panels you will get affected maybe we are not realizing it maybe as humans we are not realizing it we are at this time the mobile phones that we are using the broken screens that we throw away are we utilizing it in a proper manner abhi bhi hame sadak pe padi hui bahut jagah pe screen mil jati hai plastic ke tukde par pade rehte hain charu pe pade rehte are we using it so there is one parameter that is called we all know about the gdp gross domestic product okay gdp is a very important parameter which is considered by each and every government when they are preparing themselves but this gdp does not measure the environmental degradation this considers the growth in minerals this considers the growth in Uh, what you call the iron ores the iron that is the steel that is being produced by the nation the import and the export but what affects but how are these affecting the environment they never consider this so uh, there was one term uh, which is known as the genuine progress indicator or the gpi okay so what exactly is gpi you know, there was this is an alternate term 
which was given by uh, Clifford Cobb, Ted Halstead, and Jonathan Rowe, who were working uh, in this organization known as the Redefining Progress. They proposed this term, which is an alternate to GDP. It considers all the parameters on which a GDP is calculated, but it also incorporates the green indicators. And that is why it is called known as the GPI or the Genuine Progress Indicator. And this parameter is used to define, you know, a welfare of the nation, not only by the economic measures, but also by the state of its social environment and human health conditions. If you are talking about a project, if you are talking about a mine, if you are talking about a natural resource to be consumed, the government needs to pay attention to these environment parameters also because your health is being affected. If you are destroying a forest, you will pay with that air pollution. You will pay with those particulate material. Long before uh, you all will remember, long before we started using these masks because of this virus, we had already started using these masks for the pollution in the city. All of us has bought uh, those masks, um, uh, that particular PM 2.5 uh, particulate mask from all these online stores. And we had been using, even when we were driving our cars and zigzagging through the city after our college, uh, college hours in the evening, we were wearing those masks. And that led to this virus itself. You cannot say virus came uh, on its own. Although it was leaked from that lab or whatever happened. But that pollution is one major issue. That degradation is in the environment is one major issue. So we need the GDP is important. But we need this health parameter also incorporated. We need GPI also. Okay. So, as I said, GPI is an alternative to GDP and it takes into consideration how much pollution is being generated due to a effect of natural resource and how that pollution or how that effect in natural resource is affecting the human health. And therefore, GPI is a much better parameter when we talk about economic growth from the perspective of a green factor. Okay. Like in terms of human development, India's GPI is very low. The 2018 figure is just 3.96. So this is a very low parameter. Okay. Uh, look, this, this graph, this picture is clearly shows what is happening in the major cities. Okay, one is the input, the other is the output, and in between we have the system. What are we using? We are using the wood, we are using the oil, we are using all those natural resources. What we are using? We are using high quality energy. We are using high quality matter. When we talk about wood, we are using the wood. Okay. We are using wood produced by a tree. That is the pure quality. Okay. But when we are burning that wood, what are we developing? We are producing smoke. That is a low quality of energy. That is a low quality of heat. That is high quantity of pollution. What is the output? The output is a very low quality. So what we do is, we are using the best resources that nature is giving us. But we are, as humans, giving it an output of low energy, you know, a low quality energy. We are using fresh water, we are using good water, and what are we causing? The pollution. We are using those solar technologies, okay? We are using this oil. Oil is a pure form, but it is us. That how are we using it? We are using this oil into our cars. And what is car giving us? We are, it is only giving us the travel distance from like 
two hours we are reaching home, back home in one hour. But what is the byproduct? If you see from a normal point of view, we are just polluting the air. We are creating a waste. Okay, so the high quality energy or the high quality matter given to us by the environment, we have created those systems in our cells that we are producing low quality of energy. We are producing a low quality of material. We are producing huge amount of waste. We are producing a huge amount of pollution. And the problem is this blue box. That is the high waste economy. We have developed those systems. We have developed those technologies where we are developed, we are producing a huge waste. Where we are producing huge, uh, what you call uh, parameters which are affecting our environment. Okay, so this blue box needs to be changed. The most important parameter is change of this blue box. For example, we have been using for almost like almost 100 years. We have almost completed 100 years since the invention of this motor vehicle. Okay. Uh, like, uh, yeah, almost 100 years we have completed. I think more than 100 years. When we uh, started using these automobiles, invention of that automobile. And this automobile started from use of kerosene and then various type of additives to those kerosene and then to moving all to petrol, then diesel. And, you know, now we are going to electronic vehicles. Now, what happened is we have, if we talk about those people who have lived through these hundred years, they were directly affected. If you see the historical parameters of cities, of um, big cities of like you say, of England also, till 1940s or 1950s, the city of London, the city of Glasgow, they were highly polluted cities. They were highly polluted cities. And I think, at, uh, in, in fact, in some cases, they were much worse than we and India are at this stage. We are much better placed than those cities were because we had this, uh, Indians have this inbuilt system of keeping the things clean. We don't, if we find that, uh, you know, a natural resource is being destroyed, we still try to maintain it. But historically, I have read those history things also and found that those cities of uh, US also, cities of uh, around New York also, or many, they didn't have this system in place. Many big cities of England were, you know, they were industrial cities. They were developing things. But if you talk about human health system, about the value of life, they were almost negligible in these cities. The health concern, the, uh, the health concern was the last thing that these cities were having. In India, we are still, uh, you know, we are still better. If not good, we are still better. But we need a much important intervention of the government into this. And we require a good parameters, you know, a good legislation, a strict legislation in place, which can affect, the, you know, which can put, you know, bring this change. Okay, we need, as I say, I have written over here, that we need a direct connection between the misuse of these natural resources and health. You know, we need a direct connection that the misuse of these natural resources is controlled and the health is considered as an important parameter. When we are talking about a city, when we are developing a project, Mm. Let's. Uh, there's an example also when we talk about uh, a person who has been hospitalized. What do we suggestion a doctor or we as uh, concerned person give it to him? Kisi saab jagah pe ghum kya ho? Koi hawa achhi lo, kahi ghumo kisi usme. So studies have indicated that a person, if he travels, 
to a clean environment, a healthy environment, he recovers faster than in a much better way. Everywhere we are developing those societies and these living areas in our cities. Everywhere we look, अच्छा park है कि नहीं? Park में fountain है तो बहुत अच्छी बात है. Park में पेड़ भी है तो we already like it. But this is not sufficient. You know, this is not sufficient. You need a tree and a plantation. You need dedicated areas. You need dedicated forest in cities. Not a dedicated forest only at one part of a city. In Delhi, if we talk, like there might be the Northern Ridge, or there might be the uh, South Campus Ridge, or behind the Rashtrapati Bhavan, then we can move on to the Aravalli, which is almost at the outskirts. Other than that, we don't find a forest cover area anywhere in Delhi. A dense forest cover area. Where is the sink for Delhi? And that is why we are all affected by all these headaches, all these joint pains, all these health issues. You know, clean water, clean air is a necessity. Okay, so our legislations need to be present. The government needs to make these legislations. and strong implementation is the need of the hour <clears throat> okay so <clears throat> these are some of the parameters which uh, you know um, when a city is being developed and when we are developing how these parameters are affected okay the negative impact are we increasing the negative impact or the positive impact when we like uh, talk about the malaria thing uh, Indeed, the negative impact is much more than the positive impact. Although we have been able to control malaria to, uh, like, uh, to some extent, but not much. Same is with the infectious disease vectors. We have been able to develop uh, what you call medicines for these diseases, but still they exist. You cannot remove it. Okay, and they exist because of the unplanned growth of our cities. our health is being affected because of those unplanned cities we need these resources we need this what you call clean water clean air resources as part of the city system itself it becomes the imperative responsibility of each citizen of the town or a city to take care of the city and so with this i would like to thank the organizers for inviting me and giving me the opportunity to present my views but uh, finally i have just only one thing to say with all the participants that look within your community itself look within your apartment complex look within your colony itself look within your kids itself and your families itself you require awakening at this step for a better future this pandemic has made us realize many important factors which human race should consider for at least next 100 to 200 years industries are indeed good cities are indeed good we need them but we need equal contribution to preservation of our natural resources also equal parameters so that we have clean air equal parameters we have clean water try to make the city sustainable if you are not able to make your city sustainable try to make your home sustainable you can still do it make your home sustainable although maybe to a small extent you know we are living in flats i understand but still kuch sabziyan to hum khud ugai sakte hain that might be a very small contribution to making our home sustainable try to make your home sustainable try to make our society sustainable and with that once again thank you so much and thank you for hearing me namaskar